Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome to another Planet Zoo update. This time we've got the full E3 demo footage now. They uploaded it to YouTube today and it's uh, it's pretty much what we saw the other day on the um, on the E3 stage uh, with a little bit extra goodies in there as well. So I'm not going to do a complete overview of this because a lot of it we did cover the other day. So I'm mostly going to be picking up on the new things that we couldn't see the other day. Uh, first of all, uh, one thing to notice is we can see the UI a little bit better here. The UI was clipped off on the uh, on the video we saw the other day. So here, not only can we see zoom management and trading, which is interesting. That's uh, just that's maybe a way that we get rid of animals or something. I'm not too sure. Um, we can then see barriers, uh, habitat, nature, zoo facilities, construction, and blueprints. So I imagine uh, construction is going to be your uh, building pieces, your walls, your you know, these sort of statues in front of you here, the pillars, etc, etc. Uh, zoo facilities are going to be the restaurants, toilets, that kind of thing. Uh, nature is obviously going to be rocks, trees, uh, bushes, etc. Habitats, I imagine, they're going to be your set pieces that you can place down for animals. So feeders, enrichment items, uh, things like that. And then barriers, I imagine, are going to be various fences uh, that work similar to the Jurassic World fences that we currently have with the sort of drag and drop, the sort of spline based system. And then blueprints, there's going to be stuff that people have either saved themselves or grabbing from the workshop. Uh, on the right there, you've got paths and terrain. Uh, multi selection, that's just literally a, a, a way of selecting more than one item at once for moving around. If you want to maybe, if you've got like three or four buildings that work quite nicely together, you can move them, adjust them a little bit. Again, okay, exactly the same as how it works in Planet Code. Uh, very bottom left there no clue what that one is like a circular thing with a toggle on and off Let's just see if i can make out what it is a little bit no nope, no clue as to what that one is obviously then you've got the money um and then you've got uh, a, a a number with a footprint and a number with some people um i assume the number with the people is the amount of people in there the number with the footprint i'm not so sure because it currently says 789 which is pretty crazy uh later on uh, I noticed the number go in seconds from sort of 78, 80, 82, 84. So unless like some hyena somewhere was popping out babies, uh, I don't think that's just the number of animals. Or if it is, they've got some weird things going on in this build. Uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe in the full game that will be just the number of animals you have in the park. Or it might just be more of a, like a, an animal rating, perhaps. Who knows? Next up, you've got a star rating. I imagine that's the star rating of the park. You know, overall, everything taken into account. Uh, and then next to that is a relatively mediocre looking face. I again, imagine that's an average of uh, guest happiness or something like that. Uh, then you've got left and right buttons there possibly rotate or maybe undo and redo uh, a weather toggling option there and then the current temperature and weather uh, the date and then speed and the pause buttons so pretty standard stuff there so again we have the large overview of the beautiful sort of savannah the ongorogoro crater style uh, savannah area uh, they do go into a little bit more detail here we get some real good looks uh, close-ups of the animals both the giraffes and the spring box uh, looking gorgeous and we get to have a good look at the menu here again uh, again everything that we've already seen so nothing really to talk about there uh, but again you could see the really great fur shaders on them here i think they just look stunning uh, some animals i have noticed do look a little crisper than others the giraffes they're showing here look a load crisper than say the wild dogs they show later on whether it's a settings thing uh, whether it's you know their animals are still work in progress you've got to bear in mind this is still alpha footage uh, so you know take all of it with the slightest pinch of salt. Moving on from the Girafigs and the uh, spring box, we can see the elephant's enclosure that they don't really hang around in. To be honest, they move through quite, there's a load of poo in there. <laughs> they move through uh, to show the, uh, the wildebeest and the zebras. And again, they talked about how these animals work well together and actually get a bit of an enrichment bonus from being together as well, because they probably would in, uh, in the wilds. They have very similar predators and things like that. Uh, again, they're so gorgeous. Look at them. There's, there's, like I say, some of the animals, they've just completely nailed. Absolutely nailed. Um, and I'm sure the ones that still look a little ropey. I've seen a, the only reason I bring it up is because I've seen a lot of people comment saying the textures look really quite poor on some of the later animals. Uh, I can only assume it's because they're work in progress. Here's a wildebeest having a good scritch. Oh, look at that. So some really good use of the enrichment items there. As we move over the water, 
Uh, you see a good shot of the safari there. I, again, I, I'm not a massive fan of the track, but I, I think I can make it work. I've already got some ideas on what to do with it. Uh, and then it coasts over the cheetah area. Loads of cheetahs. Now, I always assume, assume that cheetahs were like, you maybe had like one or two in a zoo. They've got quite a few there. I mean, it, you can pull as many as you like in, I suppose. But I think uh, for my one, if I'm going for a bit more of a realistic view, I'm pretty sure I'd have some smaller ones. There's a baby gator. Uh, these have been confirmed. Actually, not gators, sorry. Crocodiles now. Saltwater crocodiles, these have been confirmed as. Uh, so they're crocodiles, but they have that slightly shorter snout. Now, and here they're going to use this as an example of showing how the uh, terrain changes. They did show this in the other one. It's a little bit clearer here to show you that actually um, how much the train changes exactly how they think and how they are happy. So we can see quite a few bits here. We're going to pause on some of these so I can have a better look at them. Uh, we've got uh, some soil here then, first of all. So you can see uh, the, um, the different types of uh, terrain that they want and that they have. Now again, how they're working this out, I'm not sure because like I said, the the they can be quite freeform, the environments, the the the, uh, the actual space that you give the, di the, the dinosaurs, I was going to say then, they kind of like dinosaurs, right? Uh, the space that you give the animals are quite freeform, so I don't know how it's working out this terrain distribution, unless we've got some sort of paint that we paint down a little bit like a city skylines area to say this is the area for the alligator, or if it's just a proximity thing, and they're just kind of working out from how close they are. Uh, I'm really not quite sure. I'm, it may be that, because if you look there, the sand issue, they've got 6% sand, and actually Actually, most of the back wall there, the back area, seems to be all sand. So it may be that it's more of a proximity thing. But you can see here that they haven't got enough soil. Uh, they're saying they've currently got 15% and they want more, and that's why it's red there. So in a moment, they're going to place down a little bit of soil. Uh, to kind of bump that number up. We can also see uh, some more info about the environment here. Uh, I'm guessing we've still got a little bit of placeholder stuff here, that biome image, <laughs> that guy's face, that screams placeholder image to me, that one. Um, so I imagine that's going to be uh, information about the sort of plants they like, and perhaps we're going to have to research them as we go. We're not going to know straight away necessarily through the campaign mode. Uh, list of plants there that we can have you know, and that are suitable for them and the kind of thing that they like there as well and again you can look them up on a map to confirm that even more uh, so he needs, looks like he needs a little more plants in there as well but that's not something they address uh, this time they concentrate more just on the dirt and then finally we can see an enrichment uh, so here I'm assuming the correct food and having food full stop will give an uh, food enrichment and then they've got prey scented snack uh, prey scented sack sorry uh, which I assume are those two poles there with with their uh, bags on that they can kind of pull at and, and have fun with uh, and then they've got a bedding race as well they're actually very happy with their bedding they've got their over the bedding needs so again you have to place down everything here to get the numbers right to make sure they're super happy so the only thing they really need there is some uh, is some grub and some food so now she knows she needs some soil she can grab some soil lovely here that the uh, the name the animal there stays open and you can actually see in real time you can see that number go up. There you go. So you're going to be able to real min-max those last little bits. Also, you just only put a very fine layer of soil down there. But it's enough to get that soil up into the 21%, which is good. That don't mean you have to have like real big block patches of each different material like you did in Sue Tycoon. You can really kind of uh, tweak them and have them mix and uh, be really good. Here's those dogs. Again, yeah, the texture just looks a little funky on these ones. You can see a place down uh, an enrichment item there. And we're going to have to pause there because this is the first shot we've had uh, of sort of item. UI so we can have a real good look at the kind of stuff we're looking at here at the moment it seems that everything's set to a dollar again I assume that's all still work in progress I would be very surprised if stuff still works as dollars and you can see on the left here uh, there's various options so uh, food and drink I imagine that one there um, the temperature I, I assume that's uh, the things that have kind of been hinted at the sort of uh, air con units or heating pads for, for when they need to be warmer or colder than the current climate is. Uh, habitats and looks things, ways of, uh, of bedding and stuff like that, I imagine. And then that last one, that light bulb, I imagine that's just your straight up enrichment. Uh, so there you can see footballs. It's good that they've got a couple of different styles there. They've got quite a sort of classic one, but then also a kind of battered one, as you probably would expect, especially if you're chucking them in with dogs. Uh, and there's loads of things there, look, sort of different sort of things that hang down that they can raggle about and 
things to jump on and, 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 and oh, there's just loads, look, all different things. And uh, without knowing the scale of a lot of these, it's difficult to kind of tell what they are. But a lot of them look like cat toys, you know, the sort of thing you buy <laughs> you buy for a, uh, we've had them in the past and they never bother with them. They're much more interested in the cardboard box as do the animals that this seem to be. Uh, but yeah, loads of different sort of uh, ways to play and jump around and stuff. And again, I imagine these ones have all got relatively set baked in animations. The animal goes over, raggles it about and gets plus one on the enrichment and then wanders off again as opposed to the chimps who can sort of climb all over different things freely i imagine here these are a bit more sort of baked in to the code so they get so they can make sure they get their uh, their enrichment bonuses but really exciting to see loads of different options there next thing they showed us again was the uh, the uh, the keeper there getting the food from the exterior uh, as gorgeous as it looks it's nothing new so we'll head forward a little bit to see if there's any new stuff uh, they do show us the staff pack menu which in turn shows us the uh, the main path menu as well so again we can take a look at that there you can see lots of different options uh, currently 8 9 10 11 options on regular pathing and then that one underneath there there's trees and rocks I imagine that's more of a nature path uh, very much like we did in Blanco it's more sort of like just a, a space delegated on the ground for it there and um, looks like there's a queue option uh, for the rides that there are and then the staff path is the one they're going to go into at the moment so there's an angle staff there's a length the width is still stuck at four meters unfortunately i would have really have loved them to see that be taken down to two meters because it's really useful to have a nice thin path in some spots uh, but i can understand why it's four meters purely because of how the guest uh, the guest uh, guest flow ai works um, there's a few interesting buttons there. Oh, the camera, yeah, camera options to be linked with the path. Uh, that's good to see that that can be turned on and off. And square edges there as well seems to be an option. Uh, nice looking paths, lots of sort of different colours and variations. So, uh, again, happy with that really. Uh, normally get a few paths with DLCs as far as Planko is concerned as well. So, we may well see the same there. And there are currently four staff paths there, look that we can choose from again all looking relatively samey i'm hoping that with the, uh, the the cog icon there the settings will be able to select whether or not curbs and railings are shown just like we can do in planet coaster here's a better view of the billboards then that they showed again these things are a sort of algorithmically created procedurally generated based on where you place them it shows you a picture of the animal it's near and a little bit of information about it uh, it looks like it's currently planco writing I guess, uh, reticulen scorte, that suggests to me that that says reticulated giraffe and the top name there is maybe Latin. Um, yeah, I, I still think these need a little bit of work. Uh, I could re really like to see some more information. They did say that they are, they become more informative the more you learn about the animal. So it may well be here that this is the basic one that you put up when you first get the animal and as you research them more and as you work with them more, these things get more filled out. Um, but yeah, I, th I think they could, uh, they could look a little better those for me to be honest. So here is a few better shots of the cheetahs then. These were very briefly shown in the last gameplay so it's much nicer. It's, it's great to be able to see much uh, better shots of these. Like I say quite a large family. I didn't think cheetahs lived in packs. Maybe they do. I, like I say I'm still learning about the animals. These ones look great. The fur on them looks fantastic. Uh, skin covering all looks amazing. Uh, really great features. See one there having a play with the uh, the cat's scratching post there. I've got one of those in the corner of my room. It's never been touched. They'd much rather scratch the sofa. Uh, that's my cat's, that is not my cheetahs. Uh, moving on then to the chimps. Again, we've seen these, but how good do they look? Look at this one here, ragging around the box. Wah! Yoink! Just absolutely yeets it across the place there. Uh, and again, they confirmed that all of this was piece by piece. You do have to pay attention to where you're placing it. If they can jump from this to a path, they will. If they can jump from this to a roof, and then from a roof to a path, they will. And uh, even though I don't think we've seen it happen, they have said they can climb on trees. I'm, I'm keeping my eyes out in the background. Look at him, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely ripping the cardboard box to shreds. Um, again, look at that head. They just know where to go. Do we see one? Oh, they just cut away every time it goes near a tree. <laughs> I'd love to see one interact with a tree because they, because obviously they would, right, in real life. Um, again, they, I'm sure they've said they can, so it'd be uh, exciting to see that later on. Okay, this next bit is great. I'm really glad that they showed this because I found this really difficult to explain. This is what your smaller animals are going to look like. Okay, so this is how they come. Uh, they basically come with these. Uh, glass boxes around them. They're contained to the boxes as far as I'm aware and um, 
and you can select stuff that goes inside the box. Now, I think the wood around the base here and the top is editable. Uh, I'm pretty sure they come just as a really quite plain box that you can edit and uh, decorate yourself. Obviously around the back here they've got lots of planting, this gorgeous painted tree at the front, I love that, absolutely love it. Uh, and again they come with like little um, uh, things on the front, little uh, boards there to show you information of them. Try to make out what the other ones say, you can't tell unfortunately and I can't see any animals in them to be honest, although that is definitely a different creature to this creature here. So there is something else in there, but I just can't see it. Maybe some more eagle-eyed people will be able to. Uh, but this one is an iguana. They have told us, uh, oh no, they did mention what kind of iguana. Oh, there it is, Lesser Antillian iguana, it is. There you go, a lot of people were asking me what kind of iguana it is. As far as I was concerned, iguanas are iguanas. Uh, but there we go, they look awesome. There's a couple of them in there. And uh, I'm quite glad they just kind of hang out because they, you know, can't work, you know, that's what they do in real life, right? They just kind of sit and bask a lot so they kind of need to be relatively still here you can see i'm changing the temperature and the humidity i, I don't know how much you're gonna have to micromanage that surely once you set it to how you want it it should be okay i don't know uh, but here's the interesting bit here's how you're going to be able to actually decorate what kind of goes into them and how you can sort of affect what it looks like uh, by using this uh, exhibit screen here this and um, you can place things in so these enrichment levels are going to be unlockable as you sort of research the animals. So you start off with a few different planks you can place, a few different twigs and, and sticks, I guess. Uh, and then you can move on to a few different rocks. And then finally, you've got different kind of basking lamps that you can place in. And all of these, uh, there you go, suitability's gone up from 80 to 100% there. All of these are gonna help with the suitability of the enclosure. So it's worth sort of working on them to make them happier. So I think that's a relatively elegant solution to smaller animals. I mean, they could have, you know, completely gone free form with them like the larger animals, but I imagine that would have been incredibly finicky. Um, I actually think just giving us a nice, plain glass box that we can do a lot of the stuff on the outside with and affect what happens inside as well to an extent. I think that's a relatively elegant solution. I'm quite happy with that to be honest. And another pretty awesome thing that was actually confirmed by Bo, the uh, the community manager in the chat whilst this video was uh, was airing, uh, is that these uh, terrarium kind of animals, the iguanas and maybe some spiders and snakes and things, uh, they don't actually count towards the 50 animals that they said the game is coming with, which is pretty exciting. So uh, the 50 animals, I imagine, are 50 roaming around animals, big things, giraffes, zebras, that kind of thing, uh, and the, uh, the terrarium animals are going to be in addition to that so that's it uh, uh, the last thing they show us is the rain again we have briefly seen this but we get a much better view of it here how it uh, forms how it lands on terrain and how uh, animals deal with it so you can actually watch the clouds come in thick here now look at this that looks so good the actual clouds sort of forming and the rain starts to fall and uh, a lot of animals will try their best to get out of the way of it uh, the ones they uh, they continue to show, which is fine by me because I think they look awesome, is the chimps. Uh, so here you'll see a lot of the chimps, uh, probably by the time they get over here, have already ran underneath. You'll see a lot of them there on the right, uh, kind of hanging out under the shelter. And they see a few more coming in, look. I'm getting out of this. You can see it forming there on the ground and looking great. You see them all here, look, running in and getting out of it. How good. And you can see umbrellas in the background there as well, just again to confirm that staff, uh, that guests do also get affected by the rain. Oh, big yawns. So there you go. That's a quick overview of the gameplay demo they showed. I would really recommend obviously going to watch the official one over on the Planet Zoo YouTube channel because uh, I've skipped a lot here with some of the stuff we've already seen. But obviously they're giving their own commentary. They're doing question and answers with some of the community managers. Well worth a watch. There's definitely going to be stuff I haven't touched on here. Uh, I really just wanted to kind of use this video as an opportunity to point out the few bits uh, that they're showing new uh, by the end of E3. And that's what we've hopefully done here. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, you can give us a like it really does help out the channel if you're not already don't forget to subscribe any thoughts queries suggestions you can pop all those down in the comments and if you fancy a chat you can find me on twitter i'm at john t sparrow if you'd like to join in with the geekism community you can do so over on our geekism discord server you'll find the link for that in the description thank you to all of our patrons they make these videos possible through their generous support at patreon.com slash geekism and don't forget to check out our affiliate links get yourself some cheap games and other goodies while supporting the channel at the same time thank you so much for watching I'll see you in the next one.